Father, we worship and honor you, Lord, this morning. We thank you, Father, for life that we have through your Son, Jesus Christ, who went to the cross, died for our sins, who rose again the third day. You are King of kings and you are Lord of lords. And we thank you, Father, for the privilege and honor that we have this morning to worship you to acknowledge you, Lord God, and to recognize that you are right here in our midst. Oh, Holy Spirit, would you move and remind us of how great the Father's love is for us. Would you remind us this morning of our Savior, Jesus, and his sacrifice for each one of us this morning. We love you, Lord. We honor you. You are the living hope. Our hope is in you. Through good, through bad times, our hope is always in you. And we thank you for life eternal. Jesus, in your mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Go ahead and be seated. Awesome. Well, happy Mother's Day. What we want to do this morning, here is the thing about Mother's Day, and I know it's a secular holiday, but... How we go about it in the church, I think, is very important um, because um, there are the the blessing it is to be a a mother biologically, but the blessing it is to be a, a mother spiritually, it's all there, and that's so important for us to honor this morning. Here is why I say that. Um, think about Father's Day. I know it's Mother's Day, but think about Father's Day. And I, want to, I just want to read two passages of Scripture. So one is out of 1 John. And this says out of 1 John, so John is speaking, um, and he is giving this word of encouragement, but he says it to what he says in, in chapter 2, verse 1, My little children, I am writing these things to you. What is he saying? He's got... He's he's a spiritual father, and he's got spiritual children. You look at 2 Timothy that was written by the Apostle Paul, and when he is writing, he says, To Timothy, my beloved child. What does that mean? Timothy was his spiritual child. And in the church, when you have a secular holiday, I think it's important for us to recognize all the women in here that are that are biological mothers, that are spiritual mothers. Um, it's, it's important. What I'd like us to do, one of the things, can't see, if someone could go and open the doors there, but there are bags open, and I'd like the husbands, if you would, and if you've got your child with you, but to go pick out um, one of these bags. And for those that don't have... Um, any family with them just stay put we're going to get some so for the elders and for husbands if y'all could go out real quick and get a bag we're a small congregation we can do that and kind of mingle as we're doing my wife's not here I don't even know if we're online we had some problems with the internet oh we're online okay so, Candy's back is still out, so she is there, and Abby and Stephen are with her, so. I guess I can go get my sack and take it to her, peek at it. so much Jason all right sweetheart
Let's pray. Let's pray for this wonderful gift of motherhood. Father in heaven, we want to thank you for all the women in this congregation that are influencers. We want to thank you for all the moms and even the mom-to-be. And we want to thank you, Lord, for those those women in here that are spiritual moms to many, Lord God. Father, we pray your blessing be upon each one that they would just be reminded of your unfailing, incredible love for them, that you are the Lord that goes before them, that you are with them, that you continue to give them the strength to speak into their children's life and to the spiritual children that you have given them, Lord God, to to disciple, to grow up in the faith. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for that wonderful gift of, of motherhood, the blessing that it is, Lord God. We thank you, that, Father, for men, we can't even imagine what they go through during those stages of pregnancy, in it, but it's a gift from you, Lord, to have another life in them. And so, Lord, today, just bless them. Remind them that you are God who has given them this gift of motherhood. We honor you, Lord. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Here's what I'd like us to do this morning. Um, because yesterday we had an incredible time going out. We had, um, so a rise to, I don't know how many churches were represented in Midlands. Six or seven churches in Midland were represented, and a total of, was there over 60 people that yeah, between were? Yeah, six, probably between 65 and 70 people. Okay, between 65 and 70 people went out, and being led by the Lord uh, engaged people with the gospel. Um, and there are a lot of God moments, and I want us to take some time. I think there's a lot of testimony from FCC alone. We had 13 of us that went out. And we're a part of this. And so I think there's stories. I think there's some testimonies to share. So, and, and here's what happens with testimony. When we testify of what God has done, Jesus gets lifted up and the people of God get encouraged. We get fueled. It says when we meet together, let us stir one another to love and good deeds. And so my prayer is as when we testify that the Spirit of God is going to do some stirring in this room. So, uh, who would like to give a testimony of what God did? Stories. Oh, Donna? I spent a great day yesterday. It was absolutely wonderful. God blessed in so many ways. I was hesitant when we heard about this, saying, can you handle this? Can you go out for all day and stay on your feet and talk to people? And I said, Lord... I'm just giving it to you. You're going to give me the strength, and you're going to give me the words to say. And we had such an awesome time in the mall yesterday. And we had lots of people in the mall yesterday. <laughs> it was Mother's Day shopping. I have a new friend who came from Waco, and she joined me and my dear sister-in-law from Big Spring. And we three older ladies were together. And God just opened doors of blessing after blessing after blessing. Everyone we spoke to was so receptive. I don't know if it was because we were grandmas or what it was about, <laughs> but they just opened us their arms up to us, and we were so excited. We had two young people receive the Lord. Amen. And we Amen. had a whole... <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. We were in the food court. It was noisy. But <laughs> very noisy but God overcame that and everyone we stopped to talk to to pray for everyone was just so receptive and said gave us things to pray for and we shared the circles uh, with several several we weren't able to but we had uh, we were in the mall and had just finished talking to a young lady who was um, in one of the kiosks selling some kind of cosmetics and she was not busy at the moment so we stopped and talked to her and she was so appreciative that we would pray for her family and all the, all the mothers that we talked to wanted us to pray for their 
families, mm -hmm. their children, their grandchildren. And so we did that. Some had some illnesses, and we prayed for those. But as we finished talking with her, this young man came rushing up to us, very agitated and very um, troubled. And when he came up to us, he said, I saw you praying for that woman. Would you please pray for me? Wow. And I said, well, of course we would. What can we pray about? And he said, my name's Kaylin, and I just broke up with my girlfriend, and I am brokenhearted, and I am so angry. I've been running around the mall just not knowing what to do. And I, it was just amazing to us. We just <laughs> couldn't believe it. So we did pray for him. And after we prayed, you could just see his countenance change, and he was all relaxed, and he said, I know God, but this has been so hard for me. And so that was such a blessing, and <laughs> we just were amazed what God was doing. The lady that came from Waco with me, she was a precious, precious prayer. I just, I could hear her pray all day long, and so she just made an impact on my life. And then as we were walking closer down to the other end of the hall, mall we saw this lady and she came running up to us and she said I saw you praying for that young man would you please pray for me and I was just <laughs> amazed and all of us wow. were saying absolutely so God was there and I was so thankful for the training that I've had witnessing to boys and girls and giving them the gospel because you know I, I was never I was kind of ever t intimidated to speak to adults it was just as easy as talking. And I have to tell you about this little group of soccer kids, not soccer kids, flag football kids. They had come in their uniforms, and they had just finished eating, and they were just precious. And I went up, and I said, hey, guys, what, what team are you all on? And they told me, and I, they said, we're from Abilene. We have a, a game this afternoon. I said, well, could we pray for you? And they, they said, pray that we'll win our game. <laughs> And I said, well, I'll, I'll pray. And so I prayed that God would help them to do their very best and that he loved them. And everything we do, we need to the, to the glory of God. And the coach came up and he said, thank you so much for praying for wow. those kids. That's the kind of response we had yeah. all day long. It was wonderful. Amen. Amen. Thank you, God. Yeah. That's awesome. That is awesome. Anyone else? Wanda. Yeah. Well, in spite of all my excuses not to do this, uh, Christ had other plans for me. Uh, and uh, Father knows best. <laughs> uh, so we headed out, and the first two people we talked to was just a young couple on a bench, and they didn't want anything to do with us. And so, you know, it was a little, uh, we hope the whole day doesn't go that way. So the very next person we talked to was a, a young lady celebrating her 40th birthday. She was dressed to the nine, black, split up to there, rhinestone shoes, all decked out, and they had a cake on the table, and her friend was doing the, taking photographs of her. They were there for kind of a photograph shoot, so we went over there. I had a team leader that was awesome, and uh, talked quite a while for to her, and uh, got her story. You know, she was more than willing to share, and the, the photographer had already been saved. And this girl was more than willing to share, and she had talked about having three cancer scares and being alone, you know, her whole life. And she was, I say, she was tur just turning 40, and it turned out to be so wonderful. She watched the three circles and uh, accepted Christ. Amen. And Amen. Uh, we all did a selfie, which was great. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so another, another really, it was, the whole day was awesome. Another time was uh, we had gone in kind of a, a gated dog park area, gone in there, and there was, I think it was just one big family with like four, d five adults and little, little kids and a few dogs. And, of course, the team leader and the other girl was, uh, went over and started talking to the adults, and I needed to sit down. So I sat down on the bench, and there was an elderly lady there about my age probably, and we got to talking and had so much in common, and, and I think they were all saved. As a matter of fact, the... Her son was a pastor at another church, but we had a lot of prayer, good conversation. And uh, this lady I sat down to, just talking one-on-one, -on -one, we shared a lot of our lives and uh, went away feeling definitely like 
uh, sisters in Christ. Amen. And the whole day was awesome. And the funny part was, I think Tom linked us all up. He made a good uh, <laughs> a good match because my team leader was kind of hard of hearing, and the other girl was legally blind, although she could see really well. So I was nominated to take notes because I was the only one that could see and hear. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, Wanda. That's awesome. That's awesome. Who else would like to testify what God did? I have to I have to start before we even went out because my joke was that my wife paid Tom so that she wouldn't be on my team but <laughs> <laughs> anyways it was a journey before all of this even started because I know that there were so many people that were experiencing fear you know experiencing anxiety and worry and and myself included in that you know going out and you know, I had the discussion with, I had a superstar for my team leader. It was Alex. You know, and a lot of us know Alex because she helped so many people last year, you know, uh, with their health and different things like that. But so I, the pressure was on to perform, you know, <laughs> with Alex. But uh, anyways, it was just a, just a journey to be able to, I enjoyed being able to pray uh, for the for the Holy Spirit to just not only protect everybody um, from spiritual attacks because we always know and and several of us have experienced those spiritual attacks but in our cell group going through acts and just thinking about you know the Holy Spirit and, and empowering people and so and and remembering that when they went into prayer they didn't pray for protection they prayed for boldness hmm. right they prayed for boldness to go out and share that gospel and so I was able to the neat thing about it was I was listening to the circles over and over and over and over when I drove to work I just keep hitting it just over and over and over and I have a bible study on Friday mornings at work and so I was able to I completely switch gears I went from Francis Chan the mark on study on mark and and we ended up I said guys can I practice the circles on you you know so they were like well uh, we think so <laughs> and so I ended up doing the circles presentation on the board Tristan was there some there was probably about 12 guys or so there and uh and it, it went really well there was a lot of there was a few moments where it was just really kind of crickets and I was like is does this sound and they're like oh that's just so neat I never looked at it that way and and there was a lot of discussion and questions and interaction. And, it, you know, it takes about three minutes, you know, the presentation, but the, the talk and the discussion went for about 45 minutes. So I would say it went really well. But it was a blessing to be able to practice that. And so then when we got to the point of, of going out, you know, even meeting our team, you know, we had, we had Alex, but then there was another girl, Melissa. Alex is from Big Spring. Um, uh, Melissa's from San Antonio and Melissa it was her first time as well as it was my first time you know um, and she was an introvert so she was like really nervous and I'm kind of in I know people don't believe that I'm an introvert but I am and I've had to people have pushed me out of my box <laughs> and caused me to to just step out into that but so our group was really knit together really well um, Another thing that we talked about before we went out was because I've been on missions trips, you know, to Mexico and our family's been and Austin's been to different places. And, and when you think about doing uh, evangelism in the United States, to me, it's more intimidating to go out and speak to people in the United States than it is when you go to Mexico or another country because... I don't know why it just you know it came to my mind and we had that talk you know because people are so much more receptive to me in other countries and I think of the door slamming I think of all the things you know that you know and you think of those that come to your you know your door and how are we to them you know and so it was intimidating to me but we had that talk we said why are we that way why are we not why don't we treat people in the United States exactly they have a need they need hope 
they need Jesus just like anybody else and people are coming here you know rather than us having to go there so we had that conversation in our group too so it was really neat thinking of it from that perspective before we went out so our first assignment was a dog park so we went to the dog park and we're like I knew exactly where it was because I'm always out there playing Pokemon out at Hogan Park and uh, we walk up there and, and Alex is she's upset instantly because she knows that her dog is not with her <laughs> and feels like her dog is going to know that she cheated on her <laughs> by going to a dog park without her dog. So we walk into a dog park with no dogs, and uh, the people are kind of like, what are they doing, you know? Of course, we walk over to the first guy, and he instantly, you know, crossed his arm. He's seen it. We walk clear across the field right at him, you know, <laughs> and his dogs are laying there, beautiful labs, and uh, just they they loved us. They were very receptive to the circles, <laughs> but uh, he was he was definitely in the defensive posture. But I had a great conversation with him, you know, just about work and things like that. But he didn't he didn't want prayer or anything. So uh, we went from there and we talked to him for quite a while. But then we went across and went out. There just wasn't a lot of people sitting, you know, or people that you could you'd have to chase them. You know, they're throwing balls and running with their dogs. So. We ended up talking to a guy um, that actually ended up ministering to us. He actually shared the gospel with us. He, he was kind of, he wasn't open at first, and Alex was talking to him, and then Melissa said a few things, and I was just listening, which I know it's hard to believe. I was just listening and not talking. But anyways, he started sharing the gospel. Come to find out, um, he attends church at True Light, and so he knows, you know, Pastor Rayon, Pastor Roy, he knows Pastor Larry, you know, and, and uh, so we just, we really, we ended up talking to him for over an hour and about all kinds of things, but he was, it was just such a blessing, and he, I gave him my number, and he texted me, we texted back and forth several times all day long yesterday, you know, and he was sharing things, and, and just, it was really cool, it was a, it was a great, uh, I would say, just a great meeting, you know, an encounter, right? And uh, we ended up, the, the neat thing about the whole day was God kind of showed us, especially for Melissa and I being our first time, was he showed us all different what can happen, right? You, you have a refusal, doesn't even want prayer. You have Christians that need prayer and end up, you know, we had a family and they were in tears, you know, that we were praying for their daughter Madison and, and her mom's, uh, she teaches, you know, special needs. Uh, here in here in Midland, we met with a couple of people that were teachers in Midland, which reminded me, of course, of my daughter wanting to be a teacher, and and uh, so it was just really neat how God just kind of said, you know, you'll run into this, so experience this. You'll run into this, so experience this. Like He showed us all different. You know, one guy we ended up talking to for an hour and a half, and we were trying to find our way out of this conversation because it was going clear into reptilians and like all kinds of stuff and we got done and Alex was like I think I was just drained like of all my energy <laughs> it was just but you know you 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 he needed somebody to listen mm -hmm. right and we were still he didn't want us to pray for him he wanted us to pray for the world mm -hmm. and he was receptive to Alex right her praying so she ended up sharing the gospel and praying for him in her prayer so it was she still got that plug in there and planted that seed right and so it was neat to see that happen but our very very last encounter we were we were at the we ended up at the duck ponds we just hit all these places that tony and i go walking and we're hitting all these parks and we ended up at the dock duck ponds we prayed for a family they were believers um that was the family, John and, and Lita and Amanda and uh, Madison, the little 10-year-old. We got done praying with them, and we was walking around. And this whole time that we're at the duck pond, there's this young kid. I mean, we don't know how old he is, probably 16, 17, somewhere around there. But he's just riding his bike, just just keeps passing us, right? Well, as we get done and we're walking around, coming around, he had stopped. Right as we're coming underneath this tree, he had stopped underneath this tree. Well, it was it was a setup, right? I mean, God had he had this figured out. So Alex immediately, we're just we just come in and 
you know, and there was no jump on your bike and get away, but uh, he told tired. us right off, he told us right off the bat that he was uh, Nazarite, um, and he, you know, like Alex even described, he looked like a young Jesus. I mean, he had the long curly brown hair, and he ended up, he's 15 years old, and and just really opened up to us just his life and not having his father, you know, there and, and his mother being a single mother and raising all the children and constantly working and just being alone a lot. And so there was a lot of loneliness and and I could just feel the weight, right, you know, that he was just carrying at that. He talked about not having a childhood, having to be, to be, you know, grown up a lot quicker than he planned on and and it was just a great, his name was Orion, and and, uh, and it was just a great conversation. Melissa was able to talk, and, and, and I was just, Melissa and Alex were definitely connecting with him, so I was able to pray this whole time that they were talking, and, and just praying, Lord, that he would just, his heart would be softened. And just as I'm praying, Alex starts talking about, you know, the circles and, and the gospel, and, and he ends up, he ends up accepting Christ. Uh, as his personal savior and and it's so i say he showed us all even if nobody had accepted christ it still was worth it planting the seeds and and being able to pray for people people are so receptive we ran into a lot of believers but you know we had the one guy that that didn't want prayer and i actually joked with him and said well maybe i could ask you to pray for me because i always need prayer you know and he chuckled he wasn't open to that either but you know, it was just really such a neat day. Um, I wasn't as, you know, lucky as like Donna and Tony and ended up in the mall with air conditioning and, <laughs> you know, that's why I'm sunburned. And <laughs> but it was such a wonderful day. And I just pray that my prayer is that that we do more of this, that this is not like an annual thing. This is something that we're drawn to do. And and it was so neat. It was intimidating, but neat. It was it was really cool to go with two women that I don't know. I would have much rather been with two women I didn't know than two guys. You know, you know how guys. I mean, it was just such a blessing to go with them and to get to know them. And I don't want to get into a lot of details, but we ended up um, having a late lunch snack right before we had to go back to the church. The three of us and. And there was just a, I truly believe that God had orchestrated this team because we had a moment of sharing and there was some tears shed and there was some things that were struggles within our group that actually what happened yesterday helped one of our group members work through something that it was even coming to Midland was a struggle making that decision, not going out to evangelize, but just being in Midland. So her being obedient to to God and coming here and being able to work through that and pray with her through that so I truly I truly believe that our our group was knit together for a reason we went and and had that lunch for a reason so I just pray when just like Wanda said you know just being obedient when God puts something on your heart just being obedient to that and just just stepping out in faith you know I know it wasn't easy for Pam not to call you out Pam but you did great, and you I know you were blessed by it. We were all blessed by it. So Awesome. Awesome. Time Amen. left? That's good. That's good. Awesome. Very good. <clears throat> Anyone else? Testify. Tony and then Jackie. <laughs> okay, well, um, it, it is a blessing, like Jason said, to go out and, and be able to experience this. And um, uh, hmm? oh, I got to quit saying, um, uh, <laughs> can I say, uh, <laughs> anyway, I, we did our team. Um, we started out in different places. Um, also the one that I was uh, probably most blessed with was one of them that was out at the new tennis park. And uh, I had the opportunity to pray for for this group that was there, they were, um, I keep saying they were smoking, they were sm <laughs> they were smoking a brisket or something anyway. It always sounds kind of funny when you walk up to a group, what are you smoking? Okay. <laughs> so, uh, 
and in that, um, one, they, the one guy wanted me to pray for their aunt, and uh, so I prayed for their aunt, and, they, and then before that, I asked what other prayers they needed, and, they, and one guy says, can you just pray for our mothers? It is Mother's Day, and our mothers are special. So I had the opportunity to pray, and when I got done, the, the one guy, uh, he he says, oh my goodness, I've never heard anybody pray like that before. You have me crying. And it was just like, wow, what a blessing. But I told him it wasn't me. It was just the Holy Spirit speaking. And um, and those pray- and Jesus heard our prayers. So that was a blessing to, to hear that. Ended up one of the guys did remember when he was saved. He was saved in 2015. His wife brought him to the Lord. And the other two were just kind of like going, you know. And uh, so I think the, that that was neat because I think that opened the door for the, their friend or relative or whoever that was to share the gospel with them. Uh, so that was neat. be neat to see how that turns out, but I probably won't, um, at least not on this earth. Um, the one thing I wanted to share that I thought was, where did it go? What's going on? Uh, but when we were at the church preparing to leave, uh, we, uh, there was a, 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 a verse on this window, and I stopped, and I was like, oh my goodness, this this verse was for me, and uh, and I shared it with some other people, but I think it was for a lot of us. Um, and this this is a time, a challenging time, and in, in our lives in this world, and uh, but I think you know God put us here at this time in our life on this world at this time, and this is the verse that He gave me, and it was perhaps this is the moment for which you have been created, mm-hmm. Esther four fourteen. So I took that. And with yesterday, when I was as nervous as I was, as I've done this before, but we all get nervous, um, that was what I remembered, that uh, God created me for this day. And so, anyway, I was very blessed by that. Amen. For such a time as this. That's right. Amen. That's awesome. Well, I wonder if some of you are uh, wondering what these three circles are about. Okay, some of you might. So Jason may do that for us on the big screen sometime. Okay, it's not a formula. It's not a formula. Let's not confuse the guidance of the Holy Spirit with formulas that we have heard about before, about leading people to Christ. Let's really depend on the Spirit of God. Well, there were a lot of wonderful things that happened yesterday. I think we had all together about 16 people who received Christ. There were four, about 400 contacts and such. But let's not get stuck on numbers. Our team, uh, we had uh, our leader was a lady uh, who had <coughs> been in uh, Iraq, Asia, Egypt and such and had seen a lot, witnessed a lot. And uh, the young man, actually, I felt so blessed because he used to be one of ours at FCC, moved away, moved back. Jonathan, some of you may remember Jonathan. So not only was I blessed to see him there, then to find out he was on, we were on the same team. Well, we had lots of contacts. We went to several parks, laundries, Uh, We went to the mall also, and uh, it would take a long time to tell you about all the different encounters. We did not, we did not, uh, we did not have any decisions for Christ made, but there were lots of seats planted. And then, yeah, we had two, three who were a little bit, sour pickle like, but uh, let's remember that God's word does not return to him void. So that doesn't matter. One of the encounters was with a Buddhist, and she actually let us pray for her. They were moving to Dallas and needed uh, to have the right place and so on and so forth. We prayed for her intently, and she received that. But then later on, she told us she was a Buddhist. That's okay. We blessed her. Another one was an atheist at the mall. 
and uh, he believed in God, <laughs> but he said he was an atheist, but not Jesus. He said, mm, that never happened. Okay, we blessed him, prayed for him, and so let's, uh, again, you know, there were seeds planted. The first, the first young man that we encountered was sitting at, a, that's another place we went, some of the playgrounds, because you find people there sitting and, you know, captive audience there. His name was Felipe, and uh, he was 15, and I thought he was much older than that. That young man was troubled. We could really tell he was troubled. He was from Hobbes. Anyway, we took, we took phone numbers and names, and um, Jennifer, our leader, kept, she was a scribe, and she kept all that information written so that we can do some follow-up, and most of them were receiving prayer gladly for later. They were all right with us contacting them later. So I feel that we were blessed. We were the ones that were so blessed sharing, sharing the word. But any apprehension and anxiety, we don't need to have that because God tells us that he will put the words in our mouth. The Spirit of God is the one that comes through. He that's in within is stronger than he that's in the world. We did come against the enemy too before we started also. Let's not underestimate. So it, altogether, it was a fruitful, wonderful time. And I hope that it's just to start, Amen. that the yeah. fire will catch on. Yeah. This will just be burning at some time. We'll all be burning with a desire to share the word of God. Y'all know I don't talk much, but uh, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a more introvert than Jason is, I'm sure. Um, but uh, I was amazed how many Christians are out there. We ran into so many people that already knew Jesus. We had a young fellow jogging around the dog pond. He said when he jogged by us, he could feel the spirit. Wow. And then... Uh, the best thing was we went to Strawberry Fields for lunch. There's a young fellow there that was tormented. Um, Robin, uh, I can't remember her last name. but Dar, Robin Dar. Robin Dar started talking to him, and they talked for like 50 minutes, and mm -hmm. she was refilling her tea, and, and uh, she couldn't get anywhere with him. She says, hey, would you like to come meet my friends? So he sat down with us, and uh, Hanan, Hanan was our leader, and we had Jeff and Robin and myself. And mm. this young fellow was a Christian, or s went to church when he's young, and now he believes in philosophy and that he believes in God and Jesus and whatnot, but he doesn't believe that there's a hell. So we, uh, we, we spent an hour and a half with him, and he said, I, I told him this is a divine appointment. He says, I know, because you're the fifth person today that asked to pray for me. <laughs> and we thought it was the rest of our group, but none of our group seen him before. Wow. Yeah, it was wow. amazing. It was amazing. Wow. It was great. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Marty. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. Anyone else? Yep. Yep. Well, for, this, for those that are online. <laughs> so um, the numbers were 400 people were prayed for, 102 people had the gospel shared with them and 16 people were saved Amen. but um, the, the interesting thing to me was we went um, to the dog park also but it's Bill Park dog park not Hogan Park dog park and so um, we had a um, gosh Kristen on our team which was amazing she had a lot of knowledge and was kind of a go-getter and so was the other Wanda but the three circles we were showing we went to the skate park at Bill Park there were some teenagers over there skating and some sitting down and they looked like a captive audience, so um, she led us over there, and I'll be honest, I was like, oh my goodness, no. These kids are going to like get mad at us, they're going to tell us go away, and I'm not going to be able to handle that, but um, they allowed us to sit down and start talking to them, and they did share the three circles, and, and it was this, and it's 
it's real sinful. Th th this is the world broken. This is God's perfect design of the world. And then this is Jesus Christ. So I'm not going to go into all that. But we showed him this. And then one of the boys said, can I have that piece of paper? And he turned it over. And he said, this is how I see things. He drew the small circle in the middle. This is actually his, his writing. And he said, this is the world we live in that's all broken with all the sin and all the, you know, murder and rape and drugs and all these horrible things. But I believe that there's another circle around that, and that's where everything else is. And so um, Kristen talked to him about that a little bit, and we sat there. And the other kids in the skate park, you know, they looked at us kind of with different looks. You know, they weren't always pleasant looks, but they kept coming back skating back over there listening for a minute and leaving skating back over there listening for a minute and then leaving so I feel very strongly that a lot of seeds were planted yeah. they live in Greenwood this this kid a couple of the kids live in Greenwood and so I gave him a card from the church and I said we have people from Greenwood that come into Midland all the time <laughs> we'll come get you um but that's kind of that story and then um we had the privilege our team of praying for 27 people yesterday and uh, one person came to Christ. Amen. Amen. That's awesome. <clears throat> That's awesome. Anyone else? Um, yes. I just want to brag about my daughter and 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 my yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just loving hearing everybody share this stuff. Um, you know, one of the sayings that we have at East West is that, you know, for people who go on short-term mission trips, that the end of the trip is the beginning of movement. And that's what we have hoped and prayed that this would be, this weekend would be. And uh, there's already talk and already maybe plans of uh, doing this, you know, again, uh, just ourselves, you know, with, with other people that want to join with us. Um, and so uh, that's, that's what we really hope to see. We really hope to see that the change that's occurred in all of our hearts, you know, that it, it doesn't just go away, that we just continue to uh, reach out because there is a world without hope mm -hmm. you know the fact that all those people uh, would ask to be prayed for you know and that would want to be prayed for it, it, it just shows that how much need there is out there yeah. and um, so you know we I, I think I think there's so many more opportunities yeah. and we want this to multiply uh, one of the pastors who was with us uh, actually uh, works with churches in Mexico and he's already uh, even before we had this weekend he was already training uh, people in those churches how to use the three circles so it's already it's already yeah. multiplying even outside of this country so we want to continue to multiply it in West Texas Amen, Amen Tom, thank you I'm waiting for... Okay. Uh, well, Lonnie, we're, we're going to allow Lonnie to preach today because he's prepared to preach. Uh, what I want to say is get your phone out because October 22nd and 23rd, we're having another event, and we're going to triple the amount of people that went out with us. I already got a vision cast this morning from Julie from Dallas. You'd think she'd still be in bed after this weekend, but she said, okay, Robin, in October, what do you got? And I said, I don't have anything on my calendar for October. She goes, okay, well, how about the 20, 22nd, 23rd? Let's triple our army. And I said, okay, good. Put it on the calendar. So if you did not get to go with us, you are cordially invited to put it on your calendar and save the date. And um, if you did go with us, well, we hope you will come again. But um, I think all praise and glory goes to God for drawing this group of people together that we could have never done and what he did is astounding and it's also a testimony of y'all it's harvest time how many times can i say that to you it's harvest time and we're going to see it and we need to be a part of this i don't want to miss out do you want to miss out 
think about that and pray about it. That's all I got. Amen. Amen. I will say this. Um, at, the, at the close when we met, um, one of the pastors was noticing the young generation that had come out because there, there were young people that had come out for this. Um, but the one thing that stood out to me, and yes, I, I praise God for the young generation, but one of the things that was mentioned that he said was, you know, I've never seen the young generation. Well, I was thinking back when I was a youth, I never saw the old generation do any of that. And what I was really amazed at was the old and the young. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was encouraged by the mix of, of generations. And I'm like, that's what God is about. He's stirring young, middle age, old to come together. The, the lady that I was with, I was, um, she was on the team. Um, she said, I've lived, in, I've lived in Midland for 30 years, and this is the first time I've ever decided to reach out to Midland. But the Lord was doing a new work in her life. That's what God is doing. It's not just with the young generation. It's not with just the old generation. It's with all the generations. And I was just so excited about that. And I will say this for us as a church. Yes, I'm excited about October, but I'm excited about next month. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited about the next month because we're going to be doing this before October. Yes, yes. So this is kind of the launch. I believe one of the things I, I believe strongly, parachurch ministries came into existence to come alongside the church. Um, and it's almost like to kickstart and I felt, I felt kick-started in my own life. Uh, I needed that kick-start to go out to Butler Park, right? I was telling the elders this, that, that there's soccer games going on. So there's people that are focused on soccer. And so you're thinking, oh, I don't want to interrupt them, you know. I, well, but when you're asking the Holy Spirit to lead you, he will guide you to people that are not focused on a soccer game, but that are in between. You know, and I am going to say this. Well, I got a picture of this, and this was so cool. Um, I asked one of the team members, get a picture of that. And it was Jackie under a tree with about seven or eight people sharing. And they were focused on what she was sharing. And we know what she was sharing. She was sharing Jesus. She was sharing the love of God. And she wasn't interrupting anyone. It was one of those divine moments. And, and, the, and it was the Holy Spirit that led her to that to begin to interact with those people. There are people in Midland that need to hear the gospel, that need to hear the good news. And so I am praying that as we're sharing, that God would just continue to do that stirring in each of our lives. Amen. Amen. Well, let's stand. Let's stand as we continue. We'll go with maybe one. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Seems like never before, O oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul. I worship your holy name. You're rich in love and you're slow to anger. Your name is great and your heart is kind for all. I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons.
reasons for my heart to fight. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your And on that day when my strength is failing, the end draws near and my time has come. Still my soul will sing your praise unending. Ten thousand years and then forever more. Bless the Lord. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I worship your holy name. Yes, I will worship your holy name. Lord, I will worship your Worship your holy name. Yes, I will worship your holy name. Lord, I will worship your holy name. Amen. You may be seated. do you want to take this sermon um, because I do believe that we've been hearing a sermon already uh, we've already been hearing the father's heart uh, for our life and I was just thinking if I could just say this about Tom and Robin because just thinking about the season that y'all have been in and over the past maybe two years but to see the, how the Lord, where he has y'all right now and how you're organizing this and what God is doing, um, that's exciting. That's really exciting. It's exciting to see when God is stirring all of us to, to reach people that may not know Christ. Um, if I can just say this, that's the Father's heart. The Father's heart are for lost people. We all in here, if we ever confess Jesus Christ, we all were once lost people. And if it wasn't for someone planting a seed in our life at certain points or not having a preacher to preach, we would still be lost people. You know, and I think many times when Jason said, you know, I don't know why it's true, I agree. I think it's so easy to maybe go to overseas or something and proclaiming the gospel and sharing, and somehow we get tongue-tied, fearful, intimidated when we think about America, when we think about Americans, because do we want to be, and we fear the rejection, right? I mean, yesterday I went up to a guy, um, and I said, hey, we're, we're here with the ministry. We're just you know, wanting to see if we can pray for people. Do you have anything to pray about? He goes, no, I'm good. I said, okay. I said, well, hey, uh, what, what are you here for? So he, well, he and I started having this conversation. But in the midst of the conversation, his son came up and began to talk. And so he didn't want prayer. But then as we began to engage the son in just talking about our, the, the faith in Christ and where what he was doing with his own son, teaching his own son how to pray, the dad allowed for prayer. It, it shifted gears. And it was just about being faithful to how the Spirit of God leads and where he wants to take a conversation. But what God is doing is just saying, are you willing to make yourself available? To, to, 
would you allow, you know, we, we do, how, how many of us have heard the scripture quoted, you are a temple of the Holy Spirit? Well, that means the Holy Spirit gets to have access on how he wants to lead and direct our steps, right? And so if we will just yield, we can have some incredible conversations with people and, and, and come away blessed Sometimes we're going to be led, and then while what, what gets imparted into us, we're like, thank you for that, Lord. But also, we get to be a blessing. You know, so I'm just, I'm, I'm excited. I'm pumped. So, um, and definitely wanting uh, Tom and Robin to continue to have training with us. And for us as a fellowship, as a church, one of the churches in Midland, to make it a part of our life uh, intentionally, where we're going to gather and go out. See what God wants to do. So open your, open your Bibles real quick, real quick to 2 Peter. New Testament. So we have been kind of in this season or in this series in 2 Peter talking about these qualities that come to us, that are given to us by this incredible gift of grace through faith, and these qualities we're being called to increase in. And we've been looking at, by faith, faith in and of itself is a gift. You know, many times when we talk about people coming to know Christ, it's not, they didn't do any work to come to know Christ. It's God drawing them to himself and giving that gift of faith to even say yes. So even when we're sharing, it's being that vessel and just saying, God, just do what you need to do, right? But then when he does that work of salvation and when, when there's this new creation that is birthed, what takes place? The Holy Spirit gives qualities to us to, to walk in, to grow in, to increase in, and because he wants us, his desire is for us to reflect him in a dark world, Right? We're, we're to be the reflection of God into, in this world. And so 2 Peter 1 is all about this, but this is where we've been kind of camping out. And we've gone through this aspect of the, the first part of moral excellence, knowledge. Last week we looked at self-control. We're looking at perseverance. To persevere today is a huge part of our walk. It, it's... Um, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint, right? We, we hear that trying to lose weight. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Don't try to get it done all, all at once. And yet so often our Christian walk, we can get so frustrated when the hardships come. So let's just read through this. Now, for this very reason also, applying all diligence in your faith, supply moral excellence. And in your moral excellence, knowledge, and in your knowledge, self-control, and in your self-control, perseverance. It's, it's I'm going to stay the course, right? Perseverance is all about staying the course, not veering off to the right or to the left. No matter what takes place, I'm going to stay the course, Lord, right? Self-control, perseverance, and in your perseverance, godliness. Now, here's the thing, jumping to, to verse 8. For if these qualities are yours and are what? Increasing. So it's, it's having these qualities, but it's not enough to just have the qualities. These qualities were to be increasing in, which means, you know what, even when we come to know Christ, it's, you know, we're at a certain place with the Lord. We're babes in Christ, so maybe we don't have a whole lot of perseverance. Maybe it's easy for us to get sidetracked. But as we keep our eyes fixed on Christ, getting in his word, allowing the spirit of God to lead us, we begin to increase in these qualities. We will increase. But here's the thing. It's not a given. Increasing in these qualities do not, does not magically happen. Going to church does not mean increasing in the qualities. I went to church not knowing Christ for years. 
If I am just going to read my Bible, reading my Bible does not automatically mean I'm going to increase these, in, in these qualities. If I say certain prayers doesn't mean I'm going to be increasing in these qualities. It's a life that's yielded to Christ. It's a life under the lordship of Christ. It's a life saying, Holy Spirit, fill me, anoint me, change me from the inside out. It's a, it's a heart that remains humble and moldable in God's hands where God says, ah, I'm going to start growing you. I'm going to start maturing you. But when he begins to say, aha, I'm going to start maturing you, it involves, it's going to involve us going through trials. It's going to involve temptations coming our way because for us to grow and increase in perseverance, there's, he, he's going to turn on the heat at times. He's going to allow the heat to be turned up. God does not necessarily cause, e he doesn't cause evil, but he will allow he will allow things to happen. He will allow us to lose a job. And just because we, we know Christ doesn't mean we're not ever going to lose a job. He can allow maybe one spouse or the other to kind of go wayward and the marriage becomes rocky. He, he can allow obstacles in relationships and when that happens, where is our faith? What, what are we going to rely on? What happens when a child starts going wayward? What, what happens in our life whenever the bank account's not where it should be and we're running low on bills? We can feel the heat. And so in this, it's that place of saying, in this self-control, perseverance, and and, I, and it's where the Lord is saying, I'm calling you to increase in these qualities because I want you to be effective. I want you to be fruitful. See, right here it says, if we're not increasing in these qualities, they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowing of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's not in doing for him, it's in the knowing of him. For whoever lacks these qualities is what? so nearsighted that he is blind, having forgotten that he was cleansed from his former sins. Can we forget? Can we get confused in our salvation? Can we forget? You bet. Why? Well, it can become, we can get, become too nearsighted. Right here. We're focused on our life and our own thing, and we can lose sight of Christ. And so the Lord wants us to increase in perseverance. One of the things that I find is that Jesus is our perfect example because he's not asking us and calling us to step into anything that he wasn't already being called to step in. If you, if you think about Matthew 4, okay, go to your Bibles of Matthew 4. You can look up here. Uh, but Matthew 4 is all about Jesus has just been baptized by John. And it says right after baptism, right after he got baptized uh, by John, the Holy Spirit, it says, then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he then became hungry. That's the Holy Spirit's doing. God wanted, the Father wanted the Son, after being baptized and after the, the, the voice was being heard, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. He was led into not the ministry. He didn't automatically get to go and start healing the sick and casting out demons. It was to go into the wilderness. And for 40 days and 40 nights, he then became hungry and the tempter came and said to him, the father allowed the tempter to come in to him and tempt him. It was being allowed. And the tempter came and said to him, if you are the son of God, command that these stones become bread. I mean, think about it. If you have ever 
tried to fast, even by losing some weight, if you've ever done a fast, it's not much fun what the body goes through. Think about this. If you've ever, have, how many of y'all have ever just fasted either for diet or for God? Have y'all? Okay. So you know how your mind can play on you. you you're, you're fasting, and you're, you're, you know that your fast is, say, for two days. And so you're starting that first day, and you know that, that maybe breakfast and lunch you're feeling good, but maybe at dinner time the mind starts telling you, well, well maybe if you can just have a little bread. Have y'all ever, come on, or is it just me? Okay. May, maybe, you can, maybe you can just go to the refrigerator and open up and just kind of look around. Or, or if there's a little piece of meat, maybe you just put it in your mouth and just chew on it a little bit and then spit it out. I don't know. There's so many ways that our mind can take us, right, when we're being called. And yet Jesus is 40 days and 40 nights, and he became hungry. He was hungry. It wasn't like he's just going through the motions. His body was worn out, and he was weak. And that's when the tempter came. The Father allowed it. He was fully God and fully man. And he's our example today. It's like the Lord will allow, and he will even lead us to, to situations where we may become weak and yet in our weakness we're called to persevere see Satan knows every one of our kinks in here he, he, there, there's not one person in here where Satan doesn't know kind of how to poke us he's coming after the son of God who this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased, and he's saying, if you are the son of God, if he's not, if he's not afraid of poking and coming to tempt Jesus, he's not going to be afraid to coming at us. And the father's not going to be afraid to allow it. Get that one. The father's not going to, because we're his kids. And as his kids, the father says, I want to grow you. I want you to increase in, in the quality of, of self-control and perseverance. Look at my son. Look at how he's, Staying firm, staying the course. So how does he stay the course? In the weakness. Because here's the thing, in our weakness, our mind can tell us ways to get out of it. And we can even justify ourselves. I just got through talking about marriage. How, how many marriages, Christian marriages, can end with one spouse start thinking, you know what? I think I've had enough of this. God's not going to put me through this anymore. I need to just get out. And, and it's not for the reasons of adultery. It's not for the reasons of abuse. It's just become so hard that the thoughts, well, God wants me to be happy. Let me, get, let me find a lawyer and see what my options are. Or... I don't, my, my, my bank account, maybe if I just do this one job, I know it could be a little unethical, but it's just this one time, right? See, for this, it's just one time. Jesus, you're the son of God. If you really are the son of God, you have the authority. Speak to those stones, turn it to bread. You can do this. And yet, what does Jesus do being called to, to exercise self-control, not in and, in and of himself? See, here's the thing about we have to understand, even when we're looking at Jesus, the Son of God, he is allowing himself to be directed by the Holy Spirit because he is constantly connected in communion with the Father, triune. And so here, even in this, as he's being tempted, and his, he's being tempted to turn stone into bread. It would be so easy to get out of that. The quick out. He answered, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. He actually quotes 
It is him quoting from Deuteronomy 8.3. There are two places. Why does Jesus bring this up? For two reasons. The Holy Spirit gives it to him because he's being led by the Spirit. This is Spirit breathed, and he's been in the Word. He knows the Word. And so in knowing the Word, he has a sword at his disposal to bring up against the tempter when he's at his weakness. And so he's able to stand. He's able to stay the course because he's grounded in the Word. He's grounded in being led by the Holy Spirit. And it says in Deuteronomy 8, 3, and he humbled you, and, and this is about the Israelites. He humbled you and let you hunger and fed you with manna. What does that say about God? God allowed the Israelites who were being delivered out of Egypt, he allowed them to feel hunger. They were being tested. The Israelites were being tested because why? They are God's people. When we know Christ, we are God's people. God's going to allow us to be tested. And yet, he's there to feed us with manna. Which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man does not, what? Live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. When you and I are being tested, and we're being called to increase in self-control and perseverance by our faith, is the word of God in us so that the spirit of God can bring it up to us to stay the course. Why is there such a dilemma with Christians getting into the word today? The dilemma is... We're allowing too much of the world being spoken into us. And so when we're being tested, we're going to church and we're hearing the word, but because we have more of the world in us, we're not allowing the Holy Spirit to move because he is the one that has given us by breathing upon the authors who wrote this. And so if we're not anchored in the word, what are we going to be leaning on when we get tested? What are we going to be leaning on when we face the temptation to persevere? Our thinking. Our feeling. We're going to be leaning on going to psychologists and going to the, instead of saying, God, what do you have to say? I mean, from Deuteronomy, it, he says this, you did not know this until now, nor did your fathers know. So God is doing a new work in his people, teaching them how to trust in their freedom. In their freedom, they're going to have trials and tribulations. In their freedom, they're going to have testing. He's going to allow it in their freedom. Their freedom never means, let me do what I want to do. Let me try to figure this out on my own. How did my fathers do it? Well, let me do it the way my fathers did it. We're living in a day and age where a lot of people are coming to know Christ and they have no Christian background. But the Holy Spirit is there to lead them. The word of God is being given to us. Or that's why God says to his people, go and make disciples. That's why when Robin is saying we're really living in a harvest, there are people out there, yes, there are a lot of people that say they're Christians, and there are people that are Christians. There are a lot of people that say they're Christians that have no idea of what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. They have no inkling what it means to really follow Jesus and give their life to Jesus. And, and, and a lot of that has to do with the false teachings that have come from church. We've given them more works than the grace of God. And so what we're learning from, from Jesus is how do we persevere? Is the word of God ingrained in us? Are you and I, and I'm not giving you again, and y'all have heard me preach this. I'm not saying you've got to spend 30 minutes, an hour. I'm not giving you time limit. I'm just saying for each one of us, 
are we saying, Holy Spirit, would you, would, you, would you train me? Would you speak into me about who you are and how you're calling me? No. Right now, I'm, I'm going through the book of Acts in my devotions. I've gone through the book of Acts. I can't tell you how many times I've gone and read through the book of Acts. But what the Lord has shown me is that when I open the book of Acts, and maybe it's the the 60th time that I've read it, it's never old. There are words that the Lord is constantly having jump out at me that I'm learning and I'm growing in and I'm, I'm being called to step into. I mean, I mean, I'll end with this. How, how many of us have heard quoted Acts 1.8? You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you to bear witness in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the remotest part. How many of y'all have heard that? Okay. Well, what is our Jerusalem? Midland, Texas. How many of us know the fear and anxiety of reaching people, Americans in Midland, Texas? How many know that the Holy Spirit, the Word says, you will receive power? to be my witnesses. And then we either step into that or we don't. See, that's, the, that's where the Word of God either anchors us. It doesn't anchor us in just reading it. It anchors us when we begin to step into it. And when we begin to step into it, it's like the Father saying, See? <laughs> See? I'm present. See? I'm here. See, I'm real. I'm a God of miracles. I'm a God that wants to have encounters. I'm a God that wants to awaken you to your purpose and plans. But we have to step out. We, we have to hear. Like right now, and this is the heart, this is kind of, I recognize when, when we preach on perseverance, because perseverance, I hate to tell you all this, but perseverance has to do with patience. And if any of y'all have ever asked the Lord to give you patience, then you know what's on the other side of that. So when you say, God, I want to learn patience. Love is patient. Oh, Lord, would you teach me patience? Okay. Let's do this. Do you know why most then Christians stop praying for patience? See, that's the thing. And yet the Lord knows what's going on in each of our lives right now. And he's saying, I'm calling you to increase in perseverance in the times that we're living in. The times that we're living in, people need Christ. And the times that we're living in, you're going to be tempted to bail. You're going to be tempted to look to the right or to the left at some point. It's not a given. We, we all are going to be tempted and have been tempted to look to the right or to the left. And if we're asking the Lord, Lord, increase me in perseverance, he's going to say, let's go. Because what I, I, I've, I've got some incredible purposes and plans for you, but you're also going to know what it is to be tested. Yes, Lord. Last week when we talked about self-control, it was about does Jesus have our yes, right? Yes, Lord, grow me, mature me. Jesus, you're my example, so that when you lead me into the wilderness at times and the tempter comes knocking, I'm anchored in you. I'm going to be anchored in you. I'm going to stay the course with you, Lord. Holy Spirit, anoint me, fill me keep saying I'm going to end with this. I will end with this. King Saul was anointed by the Lord. And what King Saul did is the Lord said, I'm going to put you through a test. Uh, you're, going to, you're going to face the, these, this group called the Philistines. And God speaking through Samuel said uh, to, to Saul, wait seven days and I'll come to you. And uh, we'll, we'll have a burnt sacrifice and everything else. Well, what happens? 
the Philistines are pressuring, his own people are trembling with fear. What does, what does Saul do? He takes matters in his own hands when he perceives Samuel as being late. It was a test. What did he do in that moment? He became self-reliant, and he did things saying, okay, because I'm king, I'm going to do it on my own and I, because I fear the people more than I fear God. He became self-reliant. We live in a culture that prides itself in being self-reliant. I'm not talking about just America. I'm talking about us Texans. We love becoming self-reliant people. Now, I'm not talking about being dependent on government and all of that, but I'm talking about are we completely dependent upon Jesus Christ and do we see the need to be spirit-filled continually? That's how Jesus walked. That's how he lived. And he calls us to live the same way. Amen. Amen. Listen. As Mother's Day's here, but as you have time with family, with friends, this is the sign. I, I want you to check the sign out as you go uh, from here. As you, as you leave this sanctuary, the sign says, after you get through the temperature and stuff. Yeah, you may have to sit there for a few minutes. But it says, the church is not empty. The church is deployed. The church is not empty. The church is deployed. I want you to know that's the mandate today. As you leave here today, the Father is deploying you to be light in dark places, to shine for Him. So let's stand. Stand for, and, and I'll just, just uh, give you a benediction. What a good day it's been to listen to testimonies. Amen. Let God continue to stir us. Church, as you leave here, the Lord deploys you out. He's empowered you with his spirit to go out and make disciples to shine for him. So go in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Know that you have been given the perseverance and the self-control with that faith that he has given you to walk the walk, to shine for him. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Be blessed. And look at the sign when you go out.